Hello, my dear art friends. I'm back in the studio having fun and just deciding a little bit to go for it. And ah, oh, man, there was, there was something that precipitated that and I wanted to share the story and I can't remember, I guess. I think I talk, maybe talked about it, oh yeah, on my Instagram recently where I just was remembering an assignment that I had in grad school where we had to do 20 paintings in two weeks or something, just really quick, and how freeing it was. And I'm looking at those paintings 20, almost 20 years later, and they're, they're almost like fresh for me now, like they speak to me now. And I think even at the time I was a little like, oh, sure about these I had insecurities about them maybe I didn't even document them I mean they're not on my website I didn't show them anywhere that I can recall um all that to say is that I really believe in the power of just sort of letting the creative act move through you the act, the creativity the ideas move through you without censorship without judgment I mean, I talk about this all the time. It's all like the Mindful Artist website, the Mindful Artist program I used to teach. It's a lot about that. In fact, I copied my grad school teacher and made an assignment that we used to do, which if you want an assignment, I'm going to give it to you now. What we used to do is it was called 15 Imperfect Artworks. And the whole concept was to not worry about making them the best thing ever to allow imperfection. And the whole idea was in that program was a lot of the people were coming in where they really had this deep desire to create that was a little bit blocked in some way. You know, maybe it had been many years since they created or maybe they were just feeling a little stuck recently in their practice. Whatever it was, they just didn't feel in that kind of flow with their creativity. And so that was, you know, like third or fourth week. We would just, I would say, just clear your calendar, make some time and just do it really fast. And if you have very little time, make it little tiny drawings. If you have more time, you can scale it up, but get your canvases ready or your materials all set up so that you don't have to stop or prepare or buy things that you're just like, you can just go anyway. So that's, that's always been part of my philosophy. And from time to time, I give myself that own assignment. I'm not quite doing that, but it's just like, I've just, I've been working on these different bodies of work. And, um, you know, I talked about in previous videos in this series, you know, just feeling a little bit measured and contem contemplative about them. And in fact, I just started doing some watercolor. Let me show so you. So here's a little glimpse at my work table. These are just some quick watercolors. I started some yesterday. And some of the ones, the pink ones and that purple, the four ones on the left, let's just say that, those were actually started a long time ago. So those circular forms or oval-like forms that you see there, those I just, I pulled out. Okay, so I wanted to do watercolor because it's just way more immediate than this collage business I've been involved in, which is like painting papers and painting fabrics and organizing them and translucency, transparency, opacity, color families so that I can find them when I have a color in my mind, in my head that I need. All that to say, it's like with the watercolor palette, it's just color comes to my head, I just grab the tubes and mix it. So it is more immediate, obviously. You guys know what I'm talking about. So I pulled out my travel kit and I found these papers in there and I don't even know when I put them in there. They were, they've been in there a while. It was some trip. I mean, I have this little portfolio that I use when I travel, just like a sort of a bare bones, very lightweight, smaller um, things to work on. And I pulled them out. I'm like, I'm just gonna work on these. Like, let's just see what happens. And definitely not censoring because I could hear the critical voice. Like that's dumb, that's not gonna work you know, like, this is no good. No one cares about this. Like, that is the voice that we all deal with, right? I mean, comment below if you've ever had those voices when you're working, if you ever had those voices when you're working. I would imagine that about 100% of us have that. Anyway, so I just turned that voice off and said, you know, it doesn't matter. I'm just trying stuff out. And these green ones, these I started over the weekend 
and I'm really thinking a lot about shape and relationships in shapes. And I've mentioned this before, but I'm trying to just really pare my work down and just see if I can get, get the idea across. And again, this isn't right-brained ideas. These are visual ideas that speak to the heart and see if I can get it down with the most economical means possible. And I, I look at someone like Susan Frecon, Fre Frecon, I'm not sure how to pronounce her last name. Um, and then my friend Lainey Geyer just, and I showed a book years ago. I have a video on the tantric drawings of India, these anonymous, incredibly powerful paintings. I've seen them in person and they literally carry powerful energy. That's my prayer always that my work can do that too. And I feel like my job is to make myself as clear a vessel for that as possible. And it's a life's assignment. I'm reading Barry Lopez's book about this life. It's a biography. And I came across this quote that spoke to me really deeply because, you know, I've been at this a long time. And it said, it can take a lifetime to convey what you mean, to find the opening, you watch, you set it down, and then you try again. And it just spoke to me so eloquently about what it is to be a creative person. You're just showing up and you're doing the best you can. And a lot of times it's out of your control whether the magic happens. I just <laughs> wanted to show you my work table right now because in the prior video, I spent so much time cleaning it up and it felt so great. And now I'm sort of in the throes of working and it's all a scattered mess all over again. <laughs> and I, I, you know, part of me wants to just stop and organize everything because it's a little disorderly and there's not like one place where the water is. I just keep moving things around and it's not 100% conducive, but I really was just going for it and listening to my music and having fun and taking little dance breaks. <music> to get me in the flow. So it's sort of whatever helps you get in the flow, right? So as always, I really hope this was helpful to you. Please leave me your thoughts. The conversation happens in the comments. I say this over and over again, like I really think of this as a community and I love to see you pop up again and again. I love to hear your thoughts, how this relates to your practice, if you learned anything, if you have any favorite quotes that inspire you, whatever it is. Let's, let's talk. Let's support each other. All right. See you in the next episode.